today I am showing you the second way that I cover my head now that I've had my hair transplant. It does involve wearing a wig. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know that I said that I would no longer wear wigs, braids, etc. But the reason why I do this is because this wig is not tight on my head. So I'm not causing any tension, any pressure. It's not like a glueless lace wig where it's like sucking onto your scalp. <laughs> so this is why I'm allowing myself to wear a wig. So let me start off with the basics. So as I usually do, I put on my wig cap and then as I usually do, I'm gonna put my satin bonnet on, the one that I've cut out into a circular shape. Now is the time to put on my wig. I also wear the wig grip to ensure that this doesn't really slide back too much. What I'm gonna end up doing is leaving some of the curly, or just some curls in the front, basically. like this to create some volume in the back it looks ridiculous now but once you have the headscarf on it won't look too bad so today I'm using this headscarf just ensuring that the ends are semi um, equal in length Just going to use a rat tail comb to move the baby hairs back so you can't really see them. Okay, so let me try and tie this and make it look somewhat presentable. Just crossing the two ends like that. So that's what it looks like at the back. So I'm going to just try the fabric around the hair. Just trying to ensure that the hair doesn't peek through and that I'm still keeping it tight around my head. to make these bits come back to life a bit <laughs> is some foam so um this is just the cream of nature argon oil one mixed with the loader body one that's why it looks a bit blue <laughs> and then i use some um bobby pins to hold them into place just to hold the curls into place for a few minutes so yeah, let me apply some foam to the strands of hair. Bring them back to life. Mm -hmm. 
This side struggles to curl for some reason. As you can see, there's like a huge straight bit. So this is where the bobby pins come in handy. So I just ensured that the strand of hair is really saturated. And then essentially it's like doing the pin curl, really tight pin curl. So curling the strand of hair around my fingers like that. Again, ensuring that there's lots of product on it. And then just slipping it out of my fingers. So taking my fingers out and then securing this curl as a pin curl. So grabbing one of the bobby pins and then just putting it through, holding it in place. So I'll do it with this one because it looks a bit like it's struggling as well. <laughs> So yeah, I think this side is fine. It's usually just this side, my right hand side that needs a bit of help. Okay, so it's been maybe 10 minutes or so. I'm gonna take these out now. This is how it usually looks like. It does drop after a while, which is good. Trust me, it does drop during the day. It does look a bit more like this. I'm going to London today so by the time I get there it will have dropped but I'll show you. I'll take some pictures so you can see how it looks. This wig is not touching my hairline, it's not touching my transplanted areas because as you saw I've got the wig grip literally directly on the transplanted areas and then this wig goes on top of that and I don't really find that the wig grip slides back during the day. So I don't believe the wig grip is actually creating tension on my transplanted areas. I feel like it's actually protecting it. Um, so yeah, that's how I am trying to protect my transplanted areas whilst wearing a wig and trying to make it look presentable, etc. So hopefully you like this. Let me know if you've got any questions, any comments, if you've got any other ways you are currently um, trying to make yourself look presentable a couple of months after your hair transplant. Subscribe to the channel for more videos about my hair transplant. The next video will be uploaded in a few days. So stay tuned for that video. Turn your notification bell on so you don't miss it and um, like this video if you enjoyed it and found it helpful. So